Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, a lot of interesting stuff. First up, Americans to buy Bitcoin with their second stimulus checks after initial investment turned in a 50% profit. And I'm going to tell you why this is and when you can expect it also. Cardano's making news. Cardano adds another pillar of technology as highly anticipated Shelly upgrade successfully goes live with no hiccups and no problem, which was pretty amazing. Now we're going to take a look at Cardano staking, which is everything you need to know about ADA returns. And this was a fantastic article written by Crypto Briefing, which goes over the ins and outs. And I got to say, thank you so much to them for explaining it simply. We'll take a quick look at Delegate Your Stake from staking.cardano.org. And lastly, I'm going to answer some of your hard-hitting questions as hard fork effects on cold wallet storage of cryptocurrency, which is a perfect timing because of the Shelly mainnet launch. Before we do that, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is July 30th, 1130 Texas time. Everything's looking pretty good. So Bitcoin, hey, you can't keep going up forever. That's just the way it is. And it's down 2% for the day. So there was a question yesterday about, you know, should I just go all in or should I dollar cost average? This is what I'm talking about. So it's, there's going to be dips. There's going to be uh, ups and downs, but there's not that stress of just going all in and going, okay, here, here it is. Here's $20,000 and hopefully it goes up. So just be patient, stick to your plan. But uh, although Bitcoin is up 15.7% for seven days, so good for that. Ethereum still doing great at a 0.2% increase. Now it's at 322. XRP, 24 cents, almost going to hit 25, so everything's looking good. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, Cardano in that sixth spot. I um, I don't see it staying there, and I'm going to tell you why in a little bit. But uh, Cardano's up 13% for the week. Bitcoin Cash up 15%. Litecoin up bigly, 26% for the week. Crypto.com. And before I forget, I, um, I'm i going to have a discussion with one of the VPs of operations for crypto.com or VP of uh, relation management or something like that today at 8 p.m. And uh, I'm just not sure about crypto.com. I know some of you just love it, but I just don't get it. So I need you to whatever you questions that you have that you'd like to be answered, include those in the comment section. And I'll be sure to ask this person when I talk to them. We're going to do a Zoom meeting later tonight. So. I'm interested to see what it's all about, but uh, again, I just, maybe I just, I just don't see it. Binance Coin, uh, Chainlink is up. Wow, hey Chainlink, hey Chainlink, uh, 5.2 or 0.4 for the day, so 7.40, and uh, looks like a pretty good day for most. V Chain, 12.9% uh, for over 24 hours. Hmm, not too shabby. All right, let's break into today's top story. So I don't know if this is like the top story, but uh, to me the big the to me the big excitement is around Cardano right now, especially with that Shelly mainnet launch. But I don't want to take away anything like this. This was actually a great article uh, from Bitcoin.com. Talks about Americans are going to buy uh, more Bitcoin when they get their stimulus check. So what exactly is going on? So we had covered this a couple of days ago, and I just wanted to reiterate this because I'm going to think that our I, I think that there is going to be a pretty big, big push for Bitcoin when the stimulus check comes out because people love to invest now uh, especially in cryptocurrency digital assets and uh, Bitcoin is going to be a big winner so the U.S. government on Monday expected to approve plans for this second payout which uh, looks like they already have there is actually a confirmation and even uh, Steve Mnuchin the Treasury Secretary said it's going to be pretty much the same thing so what happened before uh, the stimulus checks, uh, this is a couple months ago, but at that time when the checks, uh, as far as stimulus checks were first issue, issued, each Bitcoin traded for around $7,000. Remember those days below 10,000? Oh yeah, so long ago. Today, each $1,200 check that was invested in Bitcoin at that time is now worth about eighteen twenty nine, which is a gain of more than six hundred dollars. So, imagine this: imagine if you could put your money into the traditional market and get six hundred bucks back in like two months, three months. That's insane gains, and uh, uh, these are unprecedented times, my friends. And um, when you get some kind of gains like that, I mean, that is amazing to me. Anyhow, moving on. According to U.S. government officials, the latest stimulus checks are expected to be paid out in August. So August, we're almost there and it's going to it's going to come on the pipe. So all the all this different momentum that we have as far as the markets go just for us, just for crypto. I don't care about traditional markets. I just don't. Um, but for all the all the momentum that we have right now, we're going to see an acceleration of that 
with these stimulus checks. And it's right around the corner. So the White House economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, told CNN that families will receive this second $1,200 payout as part of a $1 trillion stimulus package. When the government first paid out the stimulus money in April, large crypto exchanges Coinbase and Binance reported a spike in exactly $1,200 equivalent deposits on their platforms. Brian Armstrong, CEO of Coinbase, said at the time that the number of $1,200 worth deposits and buys in the exchange climbed by 400% that month. So I believe it's going to be the same thing that's going to come down the pipe. And especially if, if they're going to have those stimulus checks plus another round of PPP or Paycheck Protection Plans, I don't see an issue uh, with people putting it into, you know, the Robin Hood players, the traditional market players, and of course, the cryptocurrency digital asset players. So I see a big push around August. Uh, we'll see if I'm wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to what I'm really most excited about, Cardano. So here we go. Cardano adds another pillar of technology. It's highly anticipated Shelly upgrade successfully goes live. So what exactly is going on? So the move to Shelly uh, will allow holders of ADA, Cardano's native token, to stake their coins and receive rewards. And if you aren't familiar with this, over the weekend, the Cardano team, they actually battled it out and they took a look at, because uh, they were they were going to launch uh, Shelly on the 29th. And over this last weekend, they did a bunch of tests. They, you know, they ran through the gambit. They tried to find every single problem that they could and they couldn't find it and they actually pushed forward, which to me is amazing because this, I've had complaints about Cardano many i mean for a long time because they their main net took forever i mean forever literally it took forever so um i was like you know as an entrepreneur i'm like just throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks if it doesn't this doesn't work just fix it and of course you know uh, that's why i'm not a programmer <laughs> just be honest so um I, again i'll tip my hat to them they did everything that they could do it looked like they worked very hard and uh i I watched a stream from Charles Hoskinson and, and uh, he just looks, you know, exhausted, but elated because it all went off uh, without a hitch. And to do that much work and have not a problem happen and as meticulous and as streamlined as that, that, that group is where they're just so into making everything as, as good as it can, um, it's amazing to me that they didn't shut it down. I, it, if I could have put money on it, I would have guaranteed that they would have shut it down and they would have pushed it back. But I was wrong, and uh, that just that's uh, that's good. I'm glad I'm wrong. I'm glad I was wrong. I'm glad it's moving forward. So I'm pretty happy about that. But moving on, the article in the past few months, the ADA price has more than doubled, and many experts are predicting that there is room for a lot more growth. Moving down, another development that has been long awaited by holders and many others in the cryptocurrency community is the addition of the Cardano's native token ADA to Coinbase. And Coinbase has already made its interest in the Cardano public or publicly known. The expectation has been that the move to the Shelly phase would be the catalyst for ADA's addition to Coinbase since they already have a relationship. Uh, that line of thinking makes, a t I mean, it, it totally makes sense, right? If you already have a relationship and things are going on, then why not do it? And the relationship they're talking about is that early in July at the Cardano virtual summit, uh, it was announced that Cardano had signed an agreement with Coinbase Custody that staking would be supported by the crypto onboarding giant. So here's the thing. Back in the day when Coinbase only had like three or four different uh, cryptocurrencies, it was uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. I remember those days. That's when I got into it, 2017. So when another coin came on, it was like, oh my God, this is huge, this whole thing. And it was called the Bitcoin pump. I mean, the uh, uh, Coinbase pump, uh, Coinbase listing pump, excuse me. And these days, there's a lot more different assets on there. So it's not as big of a deal as it used to be. There's a little bit of, uh, of a thing there, uh, but not so much. However, with Cardano, with it being so high up there. And I believe as time gets closer, it's gonna flip with Bitcoin Cash. It's gonna be the top five. And I have predicted actually that Cardano will be a top three cryptocurrency coin. Um, I see when, when people look at it and they go, hold on, okay, let me get this straight. Uh, Bitcoin is 11,000. It's all time high is 20,000. Well, people don't like to buy fractions of coins. They just don't. And I, and I understand what people are going to say. Hey, you can have, you know, a millionth of a Satoshi. Da, da, da. Just, that's just how it is. People want a full coin. 
So just like fractional shares, uh, they don't want to have a fractional share of Tesla. They want the whole one Tesla stock. So when they look at that, they go, okay, well, to get to this all time high, I got to spend 11,000, which sucks, but people do. And uh, I'm only going to get, you know, 9,000 back. So whatever. That's maybe I could double my money. Maybe not. Then they take a look at, you know, Ethereum. They're like, hmm, Ethereum. Well, that's around 300 bucks and it used to be 1200. So what are we looking at? Like 4X? That's pretty good. Then they look at Cardano. Like, hold on, let me, let me get this straight. It's like 13 cents, 14 cents. And it used to be a dollar something. Well, that's like 8x, 9x. I like those odds. And it, it just got listed. And there's all these upgrades. And they've they've taken years to do it. And they have all these different uh, partnerships. I mean, not partnerships. I mean, well, Price Waterhouse Coopers, I, I suppose. Um, and things are really be getting to really uh, hit this hit the stride. I think I'm gonna invest in that. That seems pretty good. And it's been around for how long? And the uh, CEO or the the person at the helm used to be at the helm of Ethereum. Okay. Now, I know there's some people that hate Cardano, and it's very few people. I know what they're going to say. So go ahead and say what you want to say in the comment section. I understand where you're coming from, but I still think Cardano is going to be a big thing. And that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Am I just uh, some foolish person who um, just is blinded by the light, and uh, it's just all a big scam? Let me know what you think, and uh, let's move on to, let's take a look at staking, huh? So staking, everything you need to know. Again, crypto briefing, hats off to you. Thank you so much for uh, making a great article. So this is the kind of stuff that I actually need, and I actually need to do this. So Cardano staking, uh, just if you don't know, operates on a cyclical basis. Rewards are paid out every epoch or every five days, which is pretty cool, right? I mean, if you're uh, staking time, somebody thing, every five days you get uh, free money. I like that. I like money. I like cryptocurrency. I'll take it. During the network's initial launch, there will be epochs in which no rewards are paid out, but that will change. Cardano addresses have separate keys for spending and staking. This means that if you decide to stake your Cardano tokens, they will never leave your wallet. Plus, Cardano doesn't require tokens to be locked in for a term. You can unstake your tokens at any time. So that's pretty nice. You know, you don't have to have them locked up for a month, three months, six months, a year. They're in there, they're out, it's up to you. So here's the big thing. Joining versus running a pool, all right? You have to be a, either a part of a pool or the pool itself. You can't just individually stake, kind of like Tezos. You know, you have to find a baker and just uh, kind of like give them, not give them your coins, but you know, you can stake them with them. And it's the same type of thing here. So Cardano relies heavily on staking pools, whereas some other blockchains rely heavily on individual staking nodes. Advanced users should run their own pool to earn higher profits. If you are an advanced user, that is not me. I'm just going to be honest. I am not advanced at all. So I'm going to uh, just join a pool. However, individual users can stake their tokens with an existing stake pool, which is a much simpler process. I like simple. I have a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to do that. You can delegate tokens from your Daedalus or Yori wallet, as explained here. And I'm going to link this, this of course, in the comments section, or the comments, the description. Uh, it looks something like this, how to delegate your stake. It's just at staking.cardano.org, and it pretty much just lays it all out. But uh, let's, let's run back here. What do you need to run a pool? If you decide to operate a staking pool, you'll need constant internet connectivity, and you'll need various technical still, skills. Uh, this is what you need. Operational knowledge of how to run and maintain a Cardano node on a 24-7 basis, system operation sk skills, experience of development and operations or DevOps, and server administration skills, operational maintenance. I do not have any of those. I'm not going to do that. You won't need a powerful computer, and ASIC device provides no advantage. So that's pretty nice, right? You don't have to like, you know, break the bank for a, a new, brand new computer if you want to do that. So what do you need to join a pool? This was interesting to me. If you join a staking pool, you won't need a constant internet connection and you won't need to monitor your stake 24 seven. There is no minimum staking amount on most pools, which unlike Ethereum, where you need 32, there is no minimum here. Very nice. However, you will need to choose a pool that is reliable and which offers low fees. Websites like Pool Tool and Adapools allow users to view the status of each pool. Also, Cardano's Daedalus Wallet also helps users choose a pool through its delegation screen. Once you've staked your Cardano, you don't need to do anything at all. That's awesome. Rewards are automatically paid out. Also awesome. And there is no need to make a claim. Triple awesome. If you do not withdraw your original stake, your ADA will remain staked and you will continue to earn rewards. 
quadruple awesome, fantastic. So how will Cardano achieve decentralization? So this is for everybody uh, who is really concerned about decentralization, which I mean, you should be, we should be, right? Uh, Cardano will ensure that its staking pools do not accumulate too much power. This was interesting. For one thing, Cardano's stake pools will offer lower rewards as they get larger. Imagine that. The bigger your stake pool is, the lower the rewards get. And this will encourage users to move between pools on a regular basis. And this will, in turn, theoretically, prevent any pool from getting dominance. Now, there's always going to be someone who tries to game the system. That's just how humans or people work, right? So uh, I still like how they're trying to say, hey, we don't want, want things to get too big. We want to kind of keep it as and try to make it as centralized as possible. Uh, and we don't want to have too much of these huge conglomerates over everything. So that I I can appreciate that. Secondly, Cardano staking pools will have little control over governance. Stake pools don't vote. Only the Genesis key holders will be able to vote. And this is the, the key word here, initially, initially. So as things move forward, everybody should be able to vote. Democracy wins, decentralization wins. I like the whole thing. So again, I will link this article plus the uh, all the information as far as how to delegate your stake and everything else in the uh, description of this video. And uh, that is it for that part. So now I'm going to actually answer a great question that was posed to, to uh, me by a subscriber. So let's jump into my uh, office, huh? Great. So welcome back to the office. As you can see, uh, here we are. Everybody, I know in the comment section, people say, oh, it looks so nice to, to have a pool and everything else. Well, uh, it's a lot of work and there's maintenance. So I uh, don't think it's that fantastic. So anyhow, so here's what we have for the question today. So this was from... Uh, Nurbik Modi, I, I think I butchered that. But anyhow, he uh, the question is, hi Dan, hope you're doing good. I also love the content. Uh, that's why I love your channel, fantastic. So he says, I'm having a difficult time finding content about what happens when there is a hard fork with the cryptos stored in a cold wallet. Good question. So he's, it, he breaks down to four pieces. He said, if you store Bitcoin or ETH or any crypto on a cold wallet like a ledger, does a hard fork matter? That's number one. Two, how do we claim coins for the hard fork? Three, do I need to sell the crypto coins on the old blockchain uh, through the exact same exchange which I bought? And uh, the last one was, are there any tax implications if you do not claim uh, the hard fork coin? So the last two are pretty easy to answer. And the first two are a little bit more difficult. And uh, what I had actually did was I actually reached out to uh, the Ledger Corporation, Ledger Company, and I asked, these same questions and I said, who can jump on with me and do a quick call? And uh, one of their uh, lead operators, uh, Fabrice Dotriat, uh, he actually responded and he came on, we did a great interview and it was like a quick, you know, five to seven minutes. And uh, unfortunately, I did not uh, click on the audio record part. So that is my fault. And uh, I'm not gonna bother Fabrice again because he is in France, it is eight hours ahead and he has a lot of things with his family, so I'm not gonna bother him. However, good news was, is that he had actually sent me an email previously and uh, had told me, uh, you know, like his, his rough answers. So I'm going to tell you what he told me in his uh, interview and also in the email so we can make this uh, crystal clear as much as possible. So number one, if you store Bitcoin or, or ETH or any crypto in a cold wallet like a ledger, does a hard fork matter? And Fabrice says, yes, it does. A uh, hard fork is basically a change of the blockchain protocol, making it incompatible with previous versions. Since there is a protocol change, it's very likely that there are also some changes in the way uh, as far as what the transactions are built. As a consequence, the new transactions may not be possible to sign using your ledger hardware wallet. And from there, several questions arise for, for Ledger. And one of the big questions that, that we actually talked about was the new hard fork uh, for uh, the Shelly uh, mainnet launch. And, and the question was, will um, Ledger actually work now uh, because of what just happened uh, with Cardano? And he said, well, he said, in, in essence, no, it, it's not going to work. Um, but he gave me a little snippet and said that, and I was the first one to know this, he says, is uh, we actually uh, just upgraded everything. So now it does work with Cardano. So uh, as far as like, if you store Bitcoin or ETH in a cold wallet, does a hard fork matter? Uh, yes, it does. And to really get to the, the meat and potatoes of it, it really comes down to a case uh, by case basis. So will the Ledger Cardano app still work? 
No. Uh, the, Shelly update is break, the Shelly update is breaking compatibility with the previous transaction format, but they've actually fixed it already, so kudos to them. Will I lose my Cardano token? I think that's another big question that came about. You know, will you actually lose everything? And uh, no, your private key remains safe during a fork. So remember, the ledger doesn't store anything. The, the ledger doesn't store uh, your cryptocurrency. What, what a ledger does is it stores your private keys. On the blockchain, which is throughout all the nodes throughout the entire uh, globe, uh, that is where all the information is stored. This is not like uh, you are actually storing coins or storing a physical property. And if you have questions, I'm going to link uh, at the very end of this video uh, to my one of my basics, which talks about um, Ledger Wallet, uh, what is a private uh, address, what is a public address, and everything along, that goes along with that to make you understand, to help you out. Okay, so that was uh, the first question. And then the second question was, how do we claim coins for the hard forked crypto, assuming the crypto is in a cold wallet? And this was actually a very long, drawn out answer. Um, because he said it's a very tricky question. But um, he states, as explained before, a hard fork is a breaking in the protocol. From there, two things can happen. Either people running nodes all agree to the update is necessary, in which case everyone moves to the new version of the protocol. And that's what's happening here with Cardano. Everybody's agreeing that there's not going to be a split just because it's a fork. Um, an example would be, and the, the best example would be, uh, Bitcoin when it's split between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. So some people went with Bitcoin Core, however you want to call it, and something went with Bitcoin Cash. And what was interesting about Fabrice is he told me that uh, what they do during these forks is they don't automatically uh, flip a switch and go, okay, we're going to make sure that we have everything compatible with this new fork. What they do is they first follow it because there is no reason, if it's not viable, a chain that kind of comes off and uh, is actually not used by anybody, just some you know wacky group that's like, we're going to do this thing, and everybody's like, no, we're not going to, we're not going to follow you. So an example would be like when you had all those different Bitcoin forks. You had uh, Bitcoin Diamond, uh, Bitcoin Onyx, Bitcoin Tomato, Bitcoin whatever. Uh, those things are not, not viable. So they're like, we're not going to waste our time with it. And that makes sense to me. So the last thing would be then, uh, I almost forgot about this, is that, you know, will you actually get, if you had, you know, back in 2017, I believe it was, 2016, I forgot, when Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash actually split, would you just see uh, Bitcoin Cash in your ledger? And at that point, it didn't actually happen. So again, it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. So if you have some type of coin, uh, some type of project that actually splits off, uh, the best thing to do would just be to contact Ledger and say, are you going to uh, support this or are you going to wait or how's it all going to happen? And the last two questions we went over, but they're pretty basic and I think it's the easiest one to answer. So the, the third question was, do I need to sell the crypto coins on the old blockchain through the same exact exchange which I bought when the hard fork happens? And he says, when a hard fork, when a hard fork happens, if you think it will result in two living chains, which is a good, a good term, living chain, some are just going to be defunct and not going to be followed. Uh, then you should keep your funds in your ledger device as you can be sure you'll end up with tokens on the two chains once the fork happens. If you deposit funds on an exchange before the fork, you are basically letting the exchange decide which chains they'll follow. They might support the fork or they might not. You'll have to check with the exchange. So again, just make sure that you have some type of uh, ability to have your private keys. If you have your private keys, everything should be safe. And uh, this actually happened to me. I remember when uh, Litecoin and Litecoin Cash I don't know if anyone remembers that. Uh, Litecoin actually split into Litecoin Cash, and it was on Coinbase, and uh, uh, that didn't actually work out. So if you don't have your private keys, like if you keep them on exchanges, then you're probably not, they're not going to support it all the time. However, I do remember Binance and Coinbase supporting certain type of forks, but they let you know like well far in advance if they're going to do it or not. So just check with them, and everything should be okay. And the last question was, are there any tax implications? if you do not claim the hard forked coins. And there's no tax implications. I can't speak for everybody throughout the entire globe. I don't know uh, the tax rules in Australia and, uh, and uh, South America, all the way throughout North America and Mexico and Canada. But I can tell you for the United States, for a taxable event to actually happen, you need to sell your cryptocurrency or you need to exchange it for something. So like if you have Bitcoin, and you transfer it into Ethereum, that is a taxable event. If you have Bitcoin and you sell your Bitcoin and uh, you get you know, fiat for that, that is a taxable event. But if you move 
your, let's say Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever else, into your uh, Ledger hardware wallet. That is not a taxable event uh, for anywhere that I, that I know of. But again, check with your personal accountant and your tax representative and it should be okay. All right. All right, so that's it for today. So, hey, before we take off, I just want to uh, make mention and give thanks to all my subscribers. If you don't know, there's a join now button underneath. Uh, you don't get anything special. I don't hold anything back. It's kind of like a tip. It's like a buck ninety nine, and uh, I just do random shout outs. And then you get like a little badge when we do live streams, which we really need to do more of. Uh, I've been kind of slacking on that, but there's been so much going on. So uh, first up, uh, Iran Rodriguez, Eric Mikeo, JCR Central. What's going on, everybody? So we got uh, also John P. All right, soft, my man from way back in the day uh sam rossman tvg cheya my man medic jack minion beloved and uh steven schmitz so hey thanks so much everybody i really appreciate it if you like these types of videos there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up in your left and right i have no idea what they are because that's what youtube does they have control of that uh so if you like these videos pick one of those and then move on but that is it for today so thanks a lot for sticking with me appreciate it and i'll see you on the next one